the tweeters um, are there to kind of egg me on and cheer me on and, and get me back on my furry football in front of my computer. Well, I think it, it, it is more important than ever to find ways to connect with your audience and to use technology to that end. And, you know, with the state of affairs in the industry, it's just great to to have these means to to connect. Is it a, a two way street? Do you do you converse with your followers or is it more just kind of yeah, absolutely I do, yeah. And um and quite often um, you know, I even uh well there was one song called Tidal which I was really having uh difficulties with. Um I wrote it in um where did I write it? In a Hokkaido in Japan. Um I wrote it there and uh I had it just a kind of piano vocal version and when I, I loved it so much, I really loved the vocals and the lyrics. So I w that was one of the first um songs that I went to actually putting the music to in my studio. And uh, it started off being one thing, kind of like a drum and bass type thing. And then I scrapped that idea and then I kind of went for this kind of rock, kind of shoegazy guitar version. And then I went for one with some Indian vocals and then I went to another. And it just went on and on and on. And I could not make a decision. So I was just tearing my hair out because it was going on and on. It was the worst, most difficult track of the record. And I put on, uh, on Twitter, I just said, look, right. I've had enough. Um, why don't you just let me know what you think? So um, I put up the original version, which actually a lot of people really loved, but I'm not. I wasn't going to do that because uh, I can do that live piano vocal version. Um, and then and then I put up four other kind of versions of in between on this this place called Twelve Seconds, and just played Twelve Seconds of each version. And um, and then people uh, let me know what they thought, and it was really helpful. And and they kind of confirmed my thoughts that they preferred the last one that I'd been working on. So I was just like, okay, I'm on the right track. <laughs> So I continued and, and eventually finished the track. <laughs> well, in the spirit of uh, of, of Twitter, um, I did ask um, people that follow follow me if they had any questions for you. Oh, <laughs> and so I've got a couple. Um, uh, Kristen Bliss says, "How do you feel you've transformed as an artist since I megaphone?" Which is a great question because yeah. you know, speak for yourself was you really setting out on your own as a producer as well as singer songwriter. Yeah. And then what's, you know, what's kind of different with, with this album? Yeah, well, I mean, I Megaphone, I started writing the songs of that when I was 15. So that's half my life ago. <laughs> so I've not only, only changed as a musician, but very much as a person as well. Um, and I like to think I've uh, grown and improved and, and uh, tried more exciting things. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel very much, uh, very much like I've moved forward, hopefully, since I, me I Megaphone and... Um, from everything, from the way that I sang to, um, I always used to, for some strange reason, I used to put this twang on my, on my, um, on my words. I'd slightly sing like American some some words, and I don't know why I used to do that. Um, and uh, and so over the years, I've kind of learnt how to sing more um, how I speak, um, and I'm always very aware of that because I I um, I don't want to I don't want it to sound like a persona or an act. You know, I want it to be. Um, as much me, but just in a kind of melodic singing, uh, melodic talking me. Um, and then musically, I guess, yeah, just lots and lots of practice. I've always been very involved in uh, the music making, um, and that's how I began, um, you know, working, uh, or being at school and getting to grips with um, computer technology when I was 12 and programming, you know, um, exam pieces on computers and uh, and then gradually learning about the studio but yeah, you know, I've worked with so many fantastic people and, and the biggest influence on me was Guy, who I love, Guy Sixworth from Fru Fru. And um, yeah, I, I just learned so much being in the studio with him. Um, I learned really how to how to imagine um, what other people, how they would experience my music because our megaphone was um, completely written on my own and um, I wasn't really aware, strangely, that, that they were actually going to be people listening to it. I know that sounds like a strange thing, but it was only until I got iMegaphone in my hands when I was like 19 that it kind of dawned on me that people were actually going to hear my songs and, and ask me questions about the lyrics, and I'd never thought about that. I know that sounds very odd, but it's the truth. Um, so when Guy worked with me, um, you know, it was how it was not how it feels to sing these these lyrics, but it became how 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 is it that people experience them, and Guy was on the other end of the, you know, the, the headphones listening to me singing them. So I've taken that um, on to speak for yourself and now into this album. Did you work on Ellipse uh, yourself or did you work again with, with Guy at all? No, no, no Guy, no. Um, we have done uh, things, you know, since Fru Fru, um, but no, we've been very much um, doing our own thing. We're still very good friends. I mean, he's super, super busy. He's actually over here quite a bit. Yeah. And he did the Alanis Morissette album. Um, sure. So he's, oh, he's brilliant. He's, he's, he's brilliant. We love he's, him. He's genius. 
Okay, you ready for uh, Twitter question number two? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is from uh, I Got I Mac. Okay. <laughs> um, it says, "We miss your crazy hairdos. Will you come back to Boston and play the Paradise?" Oh, yes, I will. Of course. Um, I don't know if it'll be the Paradise, but I'll definitely be coming back to Boston. I might even come back um, in November. Um, I'm going to be doing a kind of short tour. Um, not, you know, not like a kind of big, massive tour because I'm not quite ready for that. I just want to come back and and slowly kind of reintroduce myself as well um, to the touring side of things. So yeah, in November and a little bit December I'll just do like a three week tour of the States and I'll sure I'll be going to Boston so I am um, I have a Mac iMac person um, <laughs> yes be, be assured excellent now the last time we spoke we were involved in uh, something during Grammy week and that was the year you were nominated for best new artist and I remember seeing you on the red carpet speaking of crazy hairdos yeah. <laughs> um, how upset was the person sitting behind you oh my goodness <laughs> yeah pretty upset um, I didn't I didn't you know when I go I go to the cinema and I always have like big hair I don't actually today because I've just been jogging and it's only just dried um, but yeah when I go to the cinema I always think oh you know I really should have not put this big hairdo on because now the person behind me can't see and I was I just thought about that when I just sat down and I was like mm, I wonder who's going to be sitting behind me um, and it turned out to be James Blunt um, so I don't know if anybody knew that James Blunt was there but he was behind my hair and um, I felt pretty bad about it and I just turned around and said I'm really sorry and he said oh it's all right <laughs> well, it was it was your your year your year <laughs> Well, excellent. Well, thank you for coming through. I want to get to this song. Do you want to set this up in, in, in any special way? Yeah, I'd love to. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, everyone who's listening, you know, if, it's, uh, if, if you've been following my journey for the last two years, then you're probably just as excited as I am to finally hear something. Um, this, is, this is the first time that I'm going to play something um, on air, um, you know, to, to you. And um, for me, I've been working very hard on this album, and it doesn't feel complete until... Um, the listener experiences it because then then it becomes a full a f a, that, that's what it's all about it's about you experiencing songs um, it's about me making them but it's not complete until you hear it so this is the final kind of you know well this is the beginning now of the next stage right here right now um, so this is First Train Home and it was written it's the first one on the album um, and it was written about a really kind of rubbish night in Brighton when I just I had so much going on in my head and I just didn't want to be there there were all lovely people in the party but I just really wanted to be somewhere else. I felt very detached and um, and I wasn't I wasn't very happy. So I just um, I got on the first train home back to my house in Essex and went to the piano and this is the song I wrote. So I really hope you enjoy it and I can't wait to see a few of you along the way and lots and lots of love. 